Good evening. Thank you for joining me. I'm Pastor Mike White of the Refuge Church. Uh, thank God for another day of life, a good day, a blessing, caring for us, and helping us, even though there's problems in life, things that goes on, uh, things arise, but we overcome them, and uh, we press on, and we are blessed. I was listening to a message today, and uh, uh, he said, if you keep looking at uh, what's not been done, then you, uh, how do you say it? If you keep looking at what hasn't been done, hasn't been accomplished yet in your life, what hasn't come to pass in your life, then you'll neglect to give him praise for everything that has come and that you have it, have taken hold of and have received and sometimes we're bad to look at the glass that's half empty instead of the part that's half full instead of all the blessings and if you uh, focus and consider the blessings that God has bestowed upon you then and give him praise then you'll get through those times until the other uh, comes to pass and it will come uh, he no good thing will he withhold from you uh Brittany was talking about seeking this morning, and I'd never thought about that. She brought out, uh, seek, and you shall find. And uh, the purpose of seeking is to find. You don't just look for something to be looking for it. When I look for something, I, I'm looking because I want to find it. And uh, if you quit looking for it, and you really didn't want it anyway, you really wasn't interested. But if it's something that you really want or desire, if you lose your phone, you'll look for it. Do you find it or figure out what's happened to it? Because uh, it's something that, that, you know, you consider valuable, and they are. They're costly. Uh, but it's something that you we think we got to have these days. And, and so uh, it's got all our contacts and all our information in it. And so you'll look for it. Do you find it? And uh, so... Uh, that's the purpose of, of looking for those things. And we look for the things of God. We look for the good things of God, the things to come to pass, the things that he has promised. See, the Bible says his promises are not might and maybe. His promises are not, well, it could happen. It happens for some, uh, but others it doesn't happen. It just depends on who God chooses. No, the Bible says that his promises are yes and amen. All the promises in Christ Jesus are yes and amen. So what has he promised us? Well, there's uh, it's just a bunch of stuff he's promised us, but what is it that you need? If it's good, I guarantee he's promised it. Uh, prosper, be in health, uh, sound mind, uh, you know, a future, long life, uh, you know, joy, peace. <laughs> He's promised all of these things to us. But you you have to be proactive. you got to take a part in it, and you got to receive it, and you got to uh, meditate on that and get it into your heart. Uh, for out of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And so your heart has to be, uh, in tune with God's word. And so you've got to meditate on that word, get it into your heart, not just into your mind, or not be like a parrot and just repeat it or read a verse and, and inside of you go, well, I wish that was true. I hope that's true. Maybe it's true. No, you've got to settle it and say, it is. Uh, when Abraham considered not his own body, now dead, or the deadness of Sarah's womb, that's when he became the father of many nations. That's when it took hold in him when he got it inside of him. And so we want that. And so I'm glad I know who God is. I'm glad I know that his nature is good, his character is good, and I know that he loves us. He loves each and every one of us, and he don't have favorites that uh, he does good for and some he does bad for. Uh, and some he puts stuff on uh, and stuff. He, some people he don't put stuff on. That's not the way he operates. Well, he has to teach you something. Well, he teaches you by, you know, the fivefold ministry gifts. He teaches you by the Holy Ghost. He teaches you by the Word, by the Bible. There's many different ways to teach without putting something on you. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so uh, he's the one that's putting all this bad stuff on people, not God. God uh, wants to help you. Uh, 
see, the devil's as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so uh, if he may, then he's going to. But if he may not, he'll pass on by. You know, uh, we got to resist him steadfast in the faith. we we got to stay in the faith. And, and uh, that true faith, not just a head knowledge, but a true faith of what God has for us. And God loves us, and God has done so much. And through what he has done, we can see that everything is made available and possible to us through that. But you've got to take a hold of it. Uh, you've got to. You know, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. He's not talking about up there in heaven where God is. He was talking about the kingdom down here. He said it suffereth violence and or force. So the actual thing, the kingdom of heaven suffereth force, and the force take it by force. You know, those that press in, those that seek for those things, those that walk in those things, that are mindful of those things, and keep their hearts and minds uh upon those things. So we're going to get started. We're in Romans chapter 8. I think we just got verse 1 done last week. We talked about there's no uh, condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Uh, we talked about that last week. And it goes on in verse 2, Romans 8 in verse 2 says, for the law of the Spirit. Now we talk about the law and we're no longer under the law and we're under grace. But there's some things under grace, some good things under grace, and grace uh, empowers us. It, it don't condemn us, it empowers us. The law condemned us, uh, but the grace empowers us to live. And so I was going to start out and say, you know, oh, I've been wrong. We are still under the law, but I know the good friend of mine, he, he, he'd turn me off and go, hey, listen, you know more if you say that. Uh, so I won't do that. But we are under a law, and this law is the law of the Spirit. And it's not the, the, the Ten Commandments, it's the law of the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. And so the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus made us free from the law of of sin and death. Does that mean that I can do whatever I want to do? I can sin all, I can break all these things and do all these things? Uh, no, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. And uh, he says, uh, verse 3, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, and so the, the law was, now we know the law was holy and good and just, it was, Nothing wrong with the law, but we couldn't keep it because of the flesh. We were weak in the flesh. Uh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, uh, condemn sin in the flesh. And that right there, condemn means deprived it of its power. And because he came in, in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. He deprived it of its power. The Amplifier says he subdued, overcame, deprived it of its power over all who accept that sacrifice. He uh, did this, that the power of sin was broken uh, in Christ Jesus, and we accept that, and he empowers us to live differently now. Uh, in verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And so I looked at that, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. And so I've done some research and uh, some digging and because, you know, I wanted to know what you know. Uh, I asked the Holy Spirit, I said, guide me to where I can get some more knowledge in this, speak to me on this, and uh, help me to find some stuff that I can study out, because I want to know about the righteousness of the law being fulfilled in us. Because uh, it just said we are no longer under the law, we're free from the law, but it's the law of sin and death. And uh, it was the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And so there, there is 
there's still laws today. There's a law of gravity. You jump off a building, you're going down. You're not going up, you know, because you're spiritual, because you're saved, because you're redeemed. Uh, you're going down, you know. And there's uh, these laws that we have to operate by. And so there's the, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And so that's what we want to focus on. We want to focus on the, uh, the law of the spirit uh, of life uh, in that anointed word. Uh, and, and I run across some stuff and I studied some stuff like that. And I want to go over this with you because I thought it was pretty good. Uh, we are counted righteous in Christ Jesus because God has condemned our sin in Jesus' flesh. In order that, uh, in verse 4, it indicates that the goal or purpose or result of that verdict or acquittal in God's courtroom is that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Uh, what does Paul mean when he says that the righteous requirement of the law is fulfilled in us? And there's a couple of possibilities. A lot of commentators uh, suggest that it refers to Christ's righteousness that's credited uh, to us when we are united to Jesus. And Paul talks about this in Romans 5 and 2 Corinthians uh, 5.21. Uh, For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Now, the King James says that we might be made uh, the righteousness of uh, of God in Him, and 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 that is true. Uh, you know, the, in Romans it talks about that, and that is true. But uh, when I looked at verse up, uh, Young's Literal Translation, uh, the NLT, uh, the Amplified, uh, ma majority of them, uh, the New King James, all said that we might become the righteousness of God in him that we might become. So he was made sin, who knew no sin, that we might be uh, become the righteousness of God in him. So he, he, he did make us that, but we become that, you know, through faith, through believing in him, and through accepting his sacrifice. We are made that way. He didn't just make everybody that way. He did, it didn't just say, save everybody. You have to put faith in that. And uh, you have to believe that and accept that. And, and in your heart and confess it with your mouth. You have to uh, believe that he did that for you. And when you do, then it empowers you uh, to become the righteousness of God. Uh, and so in that, a lot of the commentators said that uh, suggest that in condemning our sin in Jesus' flesh, we already also receive Christ's perfect record of righteousness, and thus the requirement of God's law is fulfilled in us because we are united to Jesus, who completely fulfill the requirements of God's law. That's how they understand the words: in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be filled in us. Uh, in Christ, we are fulfillers of the law's requirement. Because Jesus fulfilled the law for us. And theologically, that is true. And it is good news. Uh, and it's the very foundation of a right standing with God. Uh, but in this, uh, it says, I don't think it's what Paul is talking about. Uh, there's another possibility, and it's the righteous requirement of the law that Paul is speaking about is a real life of love for God and others. And here are some reasons uh, why this could be possible. Uh, it says that the righteous requirement of the law is filled in us. It didn't say, and it's fulfilled for us. The righteous requirement of the law is filled in us, not for us, or in our behalf, which Paul could have clearly said that had been what he'd meant. The fulfillment is something happening in us, not just something happening to us or for us by someone else. And because uh, Paul talks about this in Romans 5 and 19, uh, that it was for us, for 
Romans 5, 19, for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of uh, one shall many be made righteous. And so that's what he was talking about there. Uh, the next clause in the verse that follow trace out the real life walk of Christian believers who wage war against sin in the power of the Spirit. The righteous requirement of the law is fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. The word walk indicates that the activity and obedience of believers is in view, and the following verses show why those in the flesh cannot live this way, but how in Christ, by the Spirit, we can. And so, this guy I looked at today and, and read, gave these opinions, is saying this is, you know, the righteous requirements of the law is fulfilled in us. And, and so this is a real life love walk. This is, you know, Christianity being walked out. This is the the anointed life being walked out down here. And Jesus Christ died and rose again to make that possible. That that the life that God wants us to have could be fulfilled in us down here now because He has set us free from the power of sin. Hallelujah. And so it is possible if we live in the spirit and not in the flesh. But you can switch from one to another very quickly. And uh, you you can be in the you know the flesh one minute and just switch over uh, to the spirit. And so we need to switch to the spirit side and walk after it and not fulfill the lust of the flesh, as the Bible says. And so... He has given us power to be able to do this because before they did not have the power to be able to do this because they were under the law and the law condemned them and it sin had power over them. Uh, it says when Paul speaks of the fulfillment of the law later in Romans, he clearly has in view the believer's real life of love in Romans 13, 8, it says, Owe no man anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, and so... When we think of it that way, when we think of it as a love law, then we will fulfill the law. Uh, and so the righteous, uh, the righteousness, uh, where was I at? Romans 8. Uh, righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. And so the righteousness of the law, which was uh, love, to love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, this is not a call merely to rest in Jesus who has fulfilled the law on our behalf, though in one sense he certainly has. That's what Romans 5 is concerned with. It is a call to practically, tangibly love others and thus fulfill the law. Paul seems to reason this same way as spirit-empowered walk, giving birth to love, which fulfills the law in Galatians 5. In Galatians 5 and 13, it says, For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Uh, it is in the power of the Spirit we are able to overcome the flesh and serve others in love, which is the fulfillment of the whole law. And so, you know, we say we love one another. We say, I love God. Well, if you love God, you have to love your brother. And it says, how can you say you love God and hate your brother? Uh, you've never seen God, but you've seen your brother, you know? And so this love walk is the fulfillment of, of the law. It's the righteousness of the law. Uh, it said Jesus speaks 
himself speaks of the fulfillment of the law happening in the lives of the believers as they love God and others. So whatsoever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Matthew 7 and 12. And Matthew 22 and 36, a guy said, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind. This is the great and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, he says, For this reason, for these reasons, I understand that the law of God, that is the commandments of God, coming through the filter of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, summed up in a life of love for God and others, are not uh, negligible. Because we are under grace and saved by Christ's sacrifice, they are doable because we are saved by grace and counted righteous in Christ. And so he's saying that we that, that believe in Jesus should be the ones that are showing the love, showing the grace, showing the mercy, showing who God is, that we should be like Jesus Christ, as Randall always says, we should be like Jesus. Did, did Jesus uh, love? Yes. He said he wouldn't cast out anybody that came to him. Uh, the only problems he ever had with people were the religious rulers that tried to condemn him and, and condemn others and, and, you know, and wouldn't come, you know, and, and wanted the law instead of the love. That's, you know, they didn't show no love. They didn't show no compassion. They didn't show no mercy. And in the law, you know, it, it stated it, it's, it was what it was. But it was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, to show us that we needed this grace and mercy. Everybody did. You, you know, it was one thing for the Pharisees and the scribes and them to condemn somebody to death and have them stoned to death, but it had been another thing for them to be condemned and, and had somebody stone them. They wouldn't have liked that, but they were just following the law of what God had set up. But it should have drove them, people, to Christ. You see, it should have drove... They were the word people of the day. They should have drove them to Christ Jesus. It should have drove them to them. They should have saw the harshness of the law, the condemnation of the law, uh, the, the, the shame and guilt that the law brought and all of this and the death that it brought. They should have saw that and they should have rejoiced like the others did at his coming because they were word people but they upheld the law and thought well long as I don't do it outwardly you know long as I don't kill somebody but I can hate them all I want to and say everything I want to then I'm not guilty of the law but grace steps up and says you know if you you hate your brother you know if you you call him bad names you know you're in danger you know because that's grace, but grace allowed us to love one another with the love of of Christ. And you say, how, how do you how do you know that? Because look at the example after he had risen from the dead, before he had risen and sent the Holy Ghost, before uh, Pentecost, Peter took a sword and cut a guy's ear off that was trying to take Jesus. Uh, Peter rebuked Jesus for saying he was going to die and raise again the third day. You know, Peter cursed and swore that he didn't even know Jesus. But after that, Peter didn't cut nobody's ear off. They crucified Peter upside down. They took him and crucified him. And he preached from town to town, was put in prison different of times. And, and so he didn't do those things. And then look at Stephen. Uh, as he was being stoned, he said, Lord, don't lay this sin at their charge. Don't, don't hold this against them. Uh, you know, he loved those people, and he was trying to tell them uh, about the new covenant, about the kingdom of God. But they wouldn't hear it. But still, he didn't hate them for it. He didn't allow hate to enter into his heart because he was being like the master. He was being like, you know, who he was following, you know. And he was a uh, disciple, uh, and, and he had learned the, the, the ways of Jesus, and he followed and he done that. And, and Paul did the same thing. Paul was beaten and stoned and left for dead and all these other things. And, 
And, uh, you know, he loved people. And he, he'd get back up and just go right back in town and go to preaching because he knew this is what they needed. And it it changed his life. He came out from under the law. that, And, and under the law, he condemned people to death. He had people uh, sentenced to death. He, he You know, he done all these things. You know, he pressed them to blaspheme and do all of these things. But after he came to faith in Jesus Christ and was anointed of the Holy Ghost, I mean, he went about doing good and he loved people. And so this is... is is the fulfillment of the law, of the righteousness of the law, is fulfilled in us, uh, that walk not after the flesh. Now, your flesh wants to get even. I understand that. It wants eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. Mine does too. It still does. <clears throat> it wants to even everything out. It wants everything to be fair. I want everything to be fair. This, should, this is not fair. This is not fair to me. It's not fair to you. This is not fair the way this is. Not fair the way that is. Not to pay, fair the way they're doing things. Not, not fair the way the government's doing. Not fair the way, you know, politicians are doing. Not fair the way all these people are. We could go on and on. Not fair. Not fair. You know, and then we grow up, go over to God. God, you're not fair. That's not fair that you've done that for one. You didn't do it for another. But when we come to the knowledge of who Jesus is and, and, and what he has brought us and what he has done for us and the love that he has shared with us and he has given us and that we can walk in that love every day, no matter what anybody does, you can't make them do right. You can preach, you can teach, you can scream, you can holler. Uh, you can do everything, but you can't make them do right. And so that's why a lot of people like the law. Because the law controls people. And if you get up and preach law, well, if you don't give, then uh, God's going to get it some way. If you don't do right, if you, you know, uh, don't read your Bible every day, something bad's going to happen to you. No, 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 no. That's not it. <clears throat> we ought to do everything we do because of love. And that's, that's what I'm saying. The, the righteousness of the law is fulfilled in us. You know, a guy asked me one time, he said, how do you get your people... Uh, not to sin. I, I don't. I can't. I, I, I can't. All I can do is, is is just teach them the word and show them uh, the goodness of God. But if you ever fall in love with Him and His word and His ways, if you ever fall in love, then you'll desire and you'll want to know everything you can about Him and you'll seek out and you'll see that He loves you and He loved you even before you figured it out. He loved you even before uh, you were good. He loved you and He always will love you because He is that good and He loves you. But now what are you going to do because of that love? Well, I'm going to love because He loves me. I love Him because He first loved me. And I love what he loves. And he just happens to love people. And he loves people that aren't lovable. He loves people that don't do right. Because love, he believes, will change everything. And it will if you will allow it. If you'll just get a hold of that and walk in that. Uh, it says, in Christ we are freed from the law to fulfill the law in, in Romans uh, 7, 6, I believe it is, it says, But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not the oldness of the letter. And so, we do things that are in the law, <clears throat> but we don't do them because the law says that. We do them out of love. It, it's, it's just, it's out of love. We don't steal, we don't kill, we don't do those things because out of love. And we don't do that in our hearts. Now, we may be working on some of that in our hearts. You know, we I've, I've never had a problem, you know, going around killing people that, uh, you know, done me wrong or didn't like. You know, I generally didn't do that. But you try to discredit them, you try to bring them down, you try to... You get even with them. You try to make other people not like them. You try to kill their reputation. You try to kill them in a, in a sense like that. But this love that I'm talking about 
won't even do that. That love will uh, keep rooting for them, keep pulling for them, that they're going to come out of this, you know. And you say, well, what if they never do? Well, that's their choice. But you won't help the situation by condemning them and putting them down because there's no more condemnation in Christ Jesus. So if they could get in Christ Jesus, all the condemnation, all the shame and guilt will go away. And a lot of people do things out of shame and guilt. You know, I used to think, well, I'm bad. I might as well just be bad. You know, if everybody thinks I'm bad, I might as well be bad. Well, if I'm I'm sorry, I might as well be sorry. You know, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. But if we think that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that we are the fulfillment of the law of love, and we walk this out in our life, it would change. It would change some things. Uh, the new covenant gift of the Spirit is the power to obey God's commands. Uh, this obedience is imperfect in this life, but is genuine nevertheless. Romans 8, 4 does not say that the entire fulfillment of the law happens in us now, but our walk by the Spirit begins now, and so does our fulfillment of the law. It all must be stressed that this law fulfilling is done in the Spirit's power and energy. The passive verb, be fulfilled, means this is something being done to us and not the work of the believer in his own strength. And the next phrase, who walk according to the Spirit, make this clear. We who walk according to the Spirit really can fulfill the requirement of the law by loving God and others. This is why the Holy Spirit has come this is what the Holy Spirit has come to do in our lives. But without the Holy Spirit, you, you can't. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, uh, patience, long term. And this is what the Holy Spirit bears through us. We're just the branches. We just hold the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does this through you, and you've got to allow Him to do that through you. And so you walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. And so <clears throat> you won't fulfill uh, the lust of the flesh and when you do that. And, and so that's that's what he's talking about, that we are those people. There is, you know, I've always said there has to be a difference, you know. And and you get born again and you just sit down in a church and you're waiting on, you know, the golden streets and the gates of pearl. You know, you're not fulfilling. You're not fulfilling the righteousness in the law. You're not... Because you know the weakness of your flesh and you're still living out of that carnality. And you need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost come upon you. You need that power to walk this out. And it's not just outwardly. You need this power to help you. You know, the greatest person on earth I have trouble with is me. That's the person I have trouble with. And the devil likes to come along and help me in those areas. But, you know, when I walk in the Spirit and I keep my mind on the things of the Spirit, I don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And, and we think of lust sometimes. We think of just, you know, adultery, fornication, and those kind of things. Uh, but the lust of the flesh is anger, bitterness, envy, strife, jealousy, all of those things, getting even, eye for an eye. Those things right there are the lust of the flesh. The flesh wants to be prideful. Uh, it, it wants all these these things, you know, and it doesn't like it. The flesh don't like it. When it's wrong, the flesh wants the way it wants it. And if it don't get it, then it's going to cry about it. It's going to complain about it. Lord help us. Uh we need to walk in the Spirit. I, I need this reminder. I have to remind myself, wait a minute, I, I'm, I'm a spirit. You know, uh, I have a soul and I live in this body and this is not it. This is not the end game. This is not everything. There's, there, <clears throat> there's more to this than just me and my life. There's more to this. There's an eternity. Not just for me, but for everybody else. And there's an eternity that they're going to spend somewhere. And so I need to be a light. I need to be a witness uh, for the good things of God, for the righteousness that's in the law. You know, I, I, I shouldn't 
you know, kill, steal, murder, bear false witness. I shouldn't do any of those things. Not because the Ten Commandments hang on the wall, but because the Holy Spirit uh, abides with me and I follow after Him. That's why I do what I do. I do it out of love, not out of obligation. I don't do it out of commandments. I do it out of love. And, and so why you do something really matters. Why you do it really, really does matter in this life. Why you, you're doing something. You know, uh, if somebody says, I say, why are you doing that for me? Well, because you've done something for me. I have to pay you back. I don't feel that good about that, you know. But if I say, because I love you. I just want to do this because I love you. What can I say to that? I say, thank you. I appreciate that. I love you too. And when we do stuff for each other and for God out of love, that pleases Him. Because, see, faith works by love. That's another message. We don't have time for that. We'll pick up in, in uh, Romans 8 and uh, verse 5 next week. I hope you got something out of this. I sure did. And enlighten me in that. That these things are being fulfilled in us. We, you know, Jesus said, I am the light of this world. As long as I'm in this world, you shall not walk in darkness. And then when he left that, he said, you are the light of the world. Who are? You are. You that believe. You're be the believers. You're the light of the world. And we are to shine the light of the glorious gospel of the kingdom of God and the anointing of God in this world. We are the ones that do this. You know, people fuss, well, you, they don't hear about that stuff on the TV and the CNN and CBS and NBA, all that stuff. That's not their job, you know. Now, if they're on there, they work for them, they're born again, they can do what they can do. But as a, as a whole, the corp, those corporations, it's not up to the government to get up and, and give a your report. It would be nice if they did. I'm not saying that. It would be awesome. If they got up and said, well, you know, this morning, uh, you, you know, we would like to report people being healed and saved and delivered and people walking in power and joy and peace this morning. And there is people like that out there. There's people walking in those things. You know, you are to be, and I, I am. I walk in those things. And so we are to be the light, you know. It'd be great if they'd announce that and say that. But they don't because that's not their focus. They're focused on the things of the flesh and they know what sells. They know what excites people's flesh because most people don't live after the Spirit. But we do. We do. We seek after that. We seek to walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh and because uh, we know it's a better life. We've tried the other way and it just didn't work for us. And so we're wa walking after this and looking after this in the Word of God by the help of the Holy Spirit. I love you. I bless you. Have a good rest of the week. We'll see you next time.